This is the Corsair IQ 220T RGB mid tower. The 220T is designed to improve airflow. One of the ways it does that is with the grille design on the front of the case. The tempered glass is easily removable. You don't need any special tools to remove the four screws in each corner. Inside the case are three included SP RGB Pro fans. Each fan has eight LEDs in the center that are controllable through the IQ software. The back panel on this case is also very easy to remove. All you have to do is remove the two screws at the top and bottom of the case and the panel will slide off. In here you'll find the new Corsair Lighting Node Core controller with the three fans already plugged in. The first thing I'm going to do is install the power supply. This is a Corsair CX650M semi-modular power supply. I'll only be needing two cables for this build, so that's why these semi-modular power supplies come in really useful for reducing clutter in your case. Now with the power supply installed, I can move on to installing the motherboard. The motherboard that I'll be using is an Asus Strix Z390E gaming motherboard. It's best to install as much as you can on a motherboard before you mount it into the case. That's why I'm going to install the RAM and processor first and then go in and install the motherboard. This processor has already been used before, so I need to wipe off the thermal paste. The best way to wipe off thermal paste is to use a cotton ball and isopropyl alcohol because it dries up fast. The processor I'll be using is an Intel Core i5-9600K with a regular clock speed of 3.7GHz. The RAM is Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4. I've got two sticks of RAM, and if you don't already know this, when you've only got two sticks of RAM and you want to dual channel, you need to place the RAM one slot apart from each other. Alright, now it's time to mount the motherboard into the case. The motherboard is mounted, so now I'll go ahead and connect the 8-pin and 24-pin cables to the motherboard. Followed by the lighting node core USB cable, the power cables for the three fans, the internal USB cable, and the HD audio cable, all while keeping the cables hidden behind the case as much as possible so that it looks clean. The final thing to connect is the front panel connectors. Make sure you refer to your motherboard manual if you don't know where these go. Next I'm going to install the solid state drive. All you have to do is unscrew the bracket and then screw the SSD onto this bracket. The SSD I'll be using for this build is a 1TB Samsung 860 EVO. Now with the SSD secured onto the bracket, I'll slide it back into the case and secure it with the screw. The last thing to do is plug the power cable and data cable into the SSD. Alright, so now I'll prepare the radiator for mounting into the case. The cooler I'll be using is the Corsair H100i RGB Platinum. I've also wiped off the pre-applied thermal paste because I'll be using a better thermal paste for this build. It's best to secure the fans on the radiator first so that you can mount it all together into the case without any trouble. The two fans that are included are the Corsair ML120 RGB fans. Now with everything secured into place, I'll go ahead and route the fan and pump cables into the back of the case before actually installing the radiator. This makes it much easier to manage the cables and keep the build looking clean. Also, you have to remove the magnetic dust filter so you can screw the radiator in from the top of the case. Remember, you don't use the long screws on this side, you only use the long screws for when you're mounting the fans on the radiator. Here you should just be using the small screws. With the radiator secured into place, I'll put the magnetic dust filter back on and continue mounting the pump bracket. There are multiple brackets included with the radiator, so you should be using the one for your situation. I should have installed the pump bracket first so that the pump itself wasn't in the way when I was screwing the bracket in from this side. I'll be using Corsair's XTM50 high performance thermal paste. A little dot in the center of the processor is all you need. All that's left is to secure the pump. Make sure you don't accidentally lift the pump back up. Once it goes down on top of that thermal paste, you don't want to lift it back up because you want to prevent air pockets. If the pump accidentally comes off, then you might have to redo your thermal paste application. Now I'm going to go to the back of the case and hook up the pump to the two ML fans with the included connectors on the pump. On the motherboard there is a power connector that says AIO pump. That's where you want to put the 3 pin power cable for the pump. I also like to hide the cable behind the heatsink so it looks clean with the rest of the build. Finally I'll connect the USB power for the pump and that will conclude everything for the pump setup. Everything looks really clean with the minimal cables showing. I went ahead and attached one more SP RGB Pro fan to the back of the case so that there is a total of 6 fans, and then I connected that fan to the 4th slot on the lighting node core controller. Here's how everything looks before the graphics card is installed. The graphics card for this build will be an MSI RTX 2060.
I hope you guys enjoyed this video and remember to hit that like button if you enjoyed, subscribe, and enable that notification bell for future videos. I'll see you guys next time.